What's up guys, the Valley Sacco, welcome to the show. So today is going to help you prevent you. Prevent, yeah, it's going to prevent you losing when you'll start getting some momentum. You'll start, you're going to start getting some amount of success and then you're going to mess it up. And you could mess it up big, big time. I've learned it hard. I've learned it the hard way. I think a year ago or two, and I I lost in business, I lost in my personal life, I lost in my health, just because of the things that I'm going to be talking to you about. So I think it'll help you, maybe prevent self-sabotage, something like this, but it, it is really going to help you out, I think. So I have not a detailed idea of what I'm going to be talking to you about, but I know it is... It's going to be talking to you about what I did this week. And uh, I do different things each week so that I get to learn something and tell you about it. If you don't know me, my name is Ivaldi Sacco. I used to be the personal trainer of a guy that was making 300k a month. I ended up going into business together. I learned a lot and now I'm building my own business. It's been three years now, I think, about three years. And uh, I document my journey here just to document the journey and also help you uh, along the way to help you become truly free and successful. So that interests you, I suggest you subscribe because it will serve you. I don't talk about what anybody else talks about, I think, because I just don't consume much content. I just like, I think I got problems and I talk to you about those problems. That's mostly what I do. I journal. I, I like to, you know, see that in a few years and uh, feel like, uh, you know, I've come a long way. It will be great for my pride. <laughs> that's that's mostly it, yeah? And we're going to be talking about pride because this is going to be a major issue, I think, uh, once you start winning. It is, it, is, it is at least for me, by the way. I'm French. You know, don't mind my English sometimes messing it up a little bit, you mis misusing some words. I'm trying to get it better. I'm trying to com communicate better in English. That is also why I'm making this podcast. I have multiple goals <laughs> with this podcast. At the same time, it's productive. It's might help me build a personal brand, right? And if you're watching this and you're just thinking of working with me, uh, it's not the best podcast to watch to make yourself an idea on me. Watch the other one. And maybe it, this is this could be actually a part four of this podcast. A part four of the mindset foundational training that I, I, I did in the three last episode, I believe. And uh, it, because once you will get some traction... So, uh, I think I'll tell you. I'll tell you in the story everything, right? So, this week, I was trying to get my ambition up a little bit. I was trying to, you know, build a little bit my identity, my future identity, trying to rework on it. So, what I talked to you about, you know, last, the, the past three episodes, and... I did some research. Like I was wondering who who was the, the wealthiest man in the world? Like in, 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 in history. I'm not talking about Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or any of any of these people. I'm talking to you about like in the history, like whoa. And yeah, I came across uh, different people, right? I come across the Rockfields, Rothschilds, the Medici, Medici family. I, I don't know. I came across different people. And one of those persons was um, King Solomon. Yeah. So King Solomon is uh, referred to in the Bible. And I'm a Christian. Just to be honest with you, I, I'm immediately like a preface this with that. I'm a Christian, and uh, but this will apply to anybody. Like if you don't believe in God, it will help you out as well. I'll tell you about some phrases of the Bible, uh, some learning that I did reading the Bible, and uh, it will serve you. If, if you're an atheist, it will serve you as much as it will for Christians. Maybe for Christians, it'll serve you a little bit more because you you believe that this is uh, God's. Uh, word but like uh, this is ancient wisdom and it, it will serve anybody to be honest with you like this is just like um, 
the Stoics, right? This is like just wisdom. And so I came across um, King Solomon. I was like, whoa, this, how did this guy build his wealth? Like he was one of the richest men in the world, in history. Like not the, the richest. I, I don't know if it, he was the richest. I think it was, it was an African man that was considered like the wealthiest in history. Maybe. Or maybe it was like uh, in Babylon. In Babylon. And I was like, okay, how, how, did, he, how did he come to amass this amount of wealth? So he was, uh, he, he became king because his father was king, right? But he knew he didn't have the wisdom to be a king because he was king like early, like uh, in his, like, he was 20 year old, I think something like this. And he was not uh, wise enough. He, he didn't have the knowledge and everything that he needed to really uh, to reign well, right? And so he asked God for discernment, I think. And so because he asked God for discernment, because I think God made him uh, a proposition. He was like, I could, uh, what do you want? Like, whatever you want, I'll, I'll do that for you. And he didn't ask for, you know, defeating his enemies or anything like this, right? Things for his personal, like, benefits. He asked for the benefits of all, right? He asked to be a great servant to all. He asked, I think, for the servant to lead well his uh, kingdom. And so God was pleased with this. And he not only did that for him, he also gave him wealth, like tremendous wealth and a, a faithful, like a, a lot of faithful servants and everything, right? He gave him like the whole deal. And at one point, this is the story, like I, I tried to summarize it as much as I understood it. At one point he, like uh, people who heard about him and everything and just uh, the one of the princess or something like this of another country heard about him. He, she wanted to, to go see him in person and see if like his wisdom and everything that he had, his like, he was so smart as a king and everything, right? He, she wanted to see if that was true. And she went, saw and br brought with her a lot of gold and like great treasures, right? And so he ended up, I think, marrying her. And she brought to him 666 uh, ounces or, or something like this of gold. And he accepted that. He married her. And uh, then he ended up doing as she wanted. And so he was kind of succumbing to the temptation, right? At first he was listening to God and now he was listening to his wife. Nothing wrong with listening to, his, to your wife, but like if your wife is not a good person, maybe it's not the best thing to listen to your wife, right? And so he, he listened to his wife and he built temples, temples I think, for um, like religious things for other gods, for his uh, wife's uh, friend. And he ended up marrying 700 wives, 1,000 wives, right? He ended up being, like, you know, promiscuous. He ended up going, be, being, like, uh, succumbing to the temptation to his lust, right? And once he did that, he kind of started th thinking himself above, like, normal rules, right? And he didn't listen to God anymore. He was listening to his desires, to his lust. And so he did that and that ended up costing him everything. And he, the empire f like fall, like it didn't fall on his right, I, I think, but like uh, basically he lost everything at the end, right? It was a, like a sad story. Like, it doesn't end well because he... He just uh, stopped listening to God. He maybe listened his faith. And he stopped doing the things 
that made him successful. That's the main point. He did something that get, got him great results, right? And then he got cocky. He he just like listened to what he wanted. He and he just like went apart from the path that brought him to his wealth. And so I was like, this is exactly what happened to me. <laughs> not, not exactly, not with the last thing, but this is like, I, I got khaki. Like, this is what happened to me. Uh, so if you don't know, I, I used to be very, when I was uh, in high school, I was very skinny. Like, even as a kid, I was very skinny, very, not that strong. And... And so I, at 16 years old, I started hitting the gym, right? I started weightlifting and I was very skinny. I got like much bigger, much bigger. And then, uh, yeah, I started being very, like pretty good. I, be, I ended up being a personal trainer, right? Then I started um, to let go a little bit of it. I lost a lot of weight. I lost a lot of muscle, a lot of strength. And then I... I decided like what why why did I lose all of this right I started getting back on and I get it back I got back on I got I got even better right I built an a b- even better body and this one I remember it was December 31st of I don't know if it was last year or last two years 2020 or 2021 I ended up I said this I was with uh, my cousins and like this is like exactly what how it happened. I was with my cousin. I was like, we were talking about things. That at one point I ended up saying, and I catch myself on the just after I said that I catch myself. I was like, oh, maybe I should have not said that. And I, what I said was, hey, now I have, like I looked myself at myself in the mirror today. I was like, dude, you have the physique of a Greek god. You have the body of a Greek god. And I was, I was very, like, just so, like, ahead of myself. Like, I was very, very confident. I was like, dude, I, I saw how it was before, and I could just gained a lot of weight like this. And I was building, like, was, like, slim. I was not uh, fat. Like, on my muscle, like, you could see everything. And like, you could see that, like, <laughs> my body built very well. And I got very cocky because of this. I said that and at this time, at the point when I said that, I realized I was like, mm. I feel like I'm kind of just, you know, doing something wrong. Next thing you know, next day, I get very, very sick. Like very, very sick. And I've never had, I never was in so much pain than two days after this one. Like, the second day, the second day I was, like, the first of January, some some year, 2021 or 2020, I was very sick. And then the next day, because I had uh, hurt my hands, I was, uh, like, in tremendous pain. Like, atrocious, atrocious, like, pain. Like, I could not move my hands. And even when I didn't move them, they hurt like crazy because I, I had stayed too much. I had like bi- big inflammation. And when I got sick, it got even worse. And maybe I slept something like some, something went wrong. And so when I did that, when I realized that, I was like, oh, like my goal, because I, I saw my health a little bit like deteriorating a little bit by little, right? And I was like, this year is the year of health. This year, I'm going to take care of my health. I'm also going to take care of my relationships because I, I was like very alone most of the time because of my business, right? I, I started getting some results in my business. And then I, I was just like, oh, everything shattered, right? I could not work anymore, so no more business. I could not go to the gym anymore. I was sick. I could not get out of bed anymore. I was like everything lost. And this like got me, like, make me, made me, made me lo- lose three weeks of my life, like th- the three first weeks of January, like was completely off. I even had committed to a project with some, well, well friends of my, my client that was making 300k a month, right? He 
asked me to work with in one of his projects. And I was like, okay, let's go, let's, let's do it. And next day, next thing you know, I'm like, I lose everything. I, I can't work as well in the the project when I had already committed to. And so I, I wanted to still work on it. So I was like working two hours a day trying to make the, the most amount of things happen. And uh, anyway, I saw that my cockiness, like uh, I was feeling like I was doing something. My, my pride lost me. Like I, lo- I lost because of my, of my pride. I lost because I, I felt I, I was doing this. Like I was making this happen. It's because of me. There's no luck involved. It's, it's actually just all me. Like I'm so grandiose. I'm so great, right? When in fact it was not totally me. There's a grace that I've been granted. And this is great that you've been graded. Maybe you're not aware of. And if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in the universe, like there's something that was given to you. And maybe you don't believe in that stuff. I, I, I do. I do. I think uh, it just like to me, it's kind of logical. Maybe I, raised, I was raised that this way. But at one point, I, I didn't believe in God. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I chose. I chose to believe in God. I was like, this is a belief that serves me. And so I... I don't know that I, I was like, I didn't realize immediately the mistake. Like I realized it when, when I read about this, uh, what's uh, the, the name? King Solomon. I was like, oh, I know, I know this was going to happen to me. Like if I didn't re- read and learned about this, and maybe it will still. Well, I hope it, dis- it doesn't. But I, uh, I had already, like, learned the lesson, and that, like, ha- ha- this situation already had happened. But I didn't totally learn the lesson because I was so sick. I was like, I didn't like even learn from my mistake. Like, I could not do anything. So I was like, immediately, like, I had so much things going on, and so I, I didn't learn it. Now I see it. And I was like, okay, this, that, that's what it was holding me back. I think it's best for me that I didn't get the amount of success that I wanted because I was going to feel so much ahead of myself. I was going to feel like I'm making this happen. And wow, I'm great. I'm the greatest man of all. Like at one point you can start thinking like, oh, you're like almost better than like, you don't need God. You don't need anybody else. You don't need no all other power. You just... You can make this all happen because of you. And you, you you start getting too cocky. And this makes you pay less attention. So I, I, I got some quotes. or Not quotes necessarily, but like things that I, I learned from the Bible that I, when I was reading this, this week. Because right now what I'm doing is like I'm... I have different priorities in my life. So my first priority right now is my faith because I believe my faith is my just like, if I, if I lose faith, I think a lot of my life will crumble down. Like it, it, it had already happened. And so I, I'm like, like, yeah, my faith is number one priority. And then my health and my business, then uh, any, anything else. Right. So because I was like, my faith is my number one priority. How am I going to increase my faith? Because this was my goal, right? I'm going to increase my faith. That's the goal. And so how do I do this? Uh, well, I went to church. And in church, the preacher, I don't know, it doesn't really, like the priest. Yeah, that's, that's I think that that's the thing. I, I live in France. The, the priest uh, told me, like immediately the, the day, next day after that I set this intention on paper, I was like, I'm going to increase my faith. The next day, the priest talks about exactly that. <laughs> no kidding I was like like th- those things like actually happens like I, it, it, there's no coincidence I don't believe that I, I don't believe in coincidences like things happen because you set intentions and you start seeing things differently like just like I talked in the last podcast like the last three parts you know training right mindset training when you start open like focusing on something your mind starts noticing things and this was even more than that to be honest with you this was like magic and the priest talks about how to increase faith well he listed like 
I started like getting my phone out of like, in, in church and I was like, okay, I'm going to write, that, write this down because I'm going to forget it. I wrote a three steps formula to increase my faith. And I, this was just like, okay, if you want to increase your faith, you need to know. If faith, faith is basically like you're in a relation, you have a relationship with, with God, with Jesus Christ for me. And to have a relationship with someone, you need to know this person, right? So you need to learn about them. So I started reading the Bible, right? And you need then to apply it. And to apply it, you need to understand what you, le- what you read, right? And to learn, actually. It's not just like reading, it's learning. So to learn, he said, like, just take a verse, right? And ask yourself, read the verse. Read a, I read a paragraph. And then I, I stop at each verse and I ask myself, okay, what does that mean? What, what, can I, what can I take from this? This is, I think, what you should do with any kind of book. Any kind of book. Because it will just... It's actually like, like this. Like you see, okay, how can you implement this knowledge into your life right now? Into your business right now? So it's, I think, tremendously helpful. And so I did that. And it's really helpful. I, I'm going to tell you a few of the things. So I wrote them... I wrote them down in, in French, so it's going to be a little bit like hard to translate, but like things like, like this one. Okay. So uh, it's uh, in uh, the book of Paul, uh, when it, uh, one of the letters of Paul, I think I didn't re- write where it was, maybe the letter to Corinthians, something like this. And so he talks about how you need to... Have hope when you work for something. You need to have hope, you know, hope of you know getting a result, right? And you deserve that. You have the right for for hoping for this result, right? But when you resist, when you delay gratification, and when you accept to not have the reward for a long time, and it decreases the friction for the work that you do because. Like you're just going to keep doing this work with no intent, like just of getting the result. You're going to keep doing this, and I've talked about this long before, and it had nothing to do with with religion or anything like this. But like this, like makes it even more, like it explains it better. I don't think I do a great job of explaining it right now, but it, it tells like if you, for example, when you are in, a, in your business. If you can help a lot of people for free and you delay this gratification of the reward of being paid, you just increases the, you decrease the friction toward helping people, which is no, normally your actual goal to help people, not to make money, but to help people in this like service that you offer, the, the help that you offer will get you at, at the end money, right? But at the forefront, it's just like you need to eliminate as much friction as possible to help those people. So it may be that some people don't want to be helped because of money, right? So you want to help them anyway, even if they don't pay you, right? And once you do that a lot, it creates so much, like, it's it's kind of also the law of reciprocity, right? So you give a lot, and so at one point, you're going to receive a lot, right? It's uh, even like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this in his book, like, a, I, I don't remember, Jab Jab right hook something like this right i don't remember the title but like uh, this is the, the same thing and um he was also talking about the his work so the work of paul is to preach right he's to just tell about god's words god's word the gospel right and uh, he he says that he does like Doing this, doing this work is not for him a title of glory. It's not for him a great and grandiose dream. It's not something that he really wants and desires to do. No. This thing, this work that he's he's doing is just like a necessity. It's just like what he needs to do. He, He can't do anything less than that. Now that he knows the truth, of God, he knows the truth of Jesus Christ. He knows and he witnessed all this great greatness. He can't do anything less than that. It's, it's, 
it's his basic minimal standard, right? And so we don't, like when we, you do the work and when you get some results, you don't get it because it's your highest dream. It's something that you aspire to have so much. No, you, you, you get those things and you do this kind of work that gets this kind of results because it's your minimum, like it's, it's your lowest standard. It's what you, like you can't do anything less than that. Like it's just normal. Like it's absolutely, like you have to do this. You can't, like, what kind of person would not <laughs> take at least one shower a week, right? No, no. one shower a day, I should have said, right? But I was like trying to exaggerate in case some of you guys <laughs> don't shower <laughs> every day. I don't know. And uh, so if you don't, like, I'd, I wish I brush my teeth at least three times a day. Like it's my like minimal standard. Like, every day I need to do this, right? I can't do anything other than that. I don't inspire. It's not like, wow, I'm great. I'm happy. I'm going, I'm going to wash my teeth, to brush my teeth three times a day. No, I'm like, it's my minimal. It's like my hate. It's hygiene, right? It's like, I'll be sick if I didn't do this. So this is how you need to think about getting to your goals, getting to your dreams, right? Serving this amount of people. Like I need to do this. Like this is my identity, right? And this relates to a lot. This is why I think like this is kind of a part four of the mindset training because it relates a lot to that. And I saw a lot of things like making reference to what I talked about before in the mindset training. So it really makes sense to watch all the four, <laughs> right? Then he, he, he says that, um, I'm trying to translate at the same time, it's pretty hard. Um, he's, He's made himself um, a Jew with the Jews, a Roman with the Romans, right? And other kind of people, right? And that tells you, like, you, you need to put yourself in the place. Like, you, you need to have empathy and put yourself in your prospects' shoes. Like, if you, if you see and become actually your client... You understand him that much better and so you can convert him. So his goal was to convert people that were non-Christians to Christians, right? Your goal is to become to convert people that are non-client into clients. And so to do this, you need to put yourself really into how they think, into who they are and become really one of them. When you become one of them, you, you can talk to them in a way that will resonate so much with them that it will make sense for them to work with you because like, you understand and you, you will sell better, way better to them this way. And so you see, like, there are a lot of wisdom in the Bible that you can take from and just apply in your business and it will make you more money. <laughs> but it has to come from the right intent, right? It doesn't have to, like, I'm going to make money, I'm better than anybody else, right? Then he, he tells you about something that really resonated with me because at this time I was trying to bigger my ambition. And he tells you about, like, the, there are people, they are, like, how do you say when people are run? Like, <laughs> a competition. When you do a competition for a medal, it's a, it's something that is, it's not, it's perishable, right? It's, it's something like you're going to lose this medal. It's not uh, infinite, Right? But when you do some work, when you choose a competition, some work that is very meaningful. And for him, it was like telling the truth. It was his purpose, right? When you do this for that reason, and not just for a medal, for some, some, some money. If you don't do this for money, you do this for a greater purpose that is unperishable, right? So telling about, to people about the truth of Jesus Christ, how he was resurrected and everything, right? He, he tells you, about, like, this is just like it doesn't perish like it's something that will serve for eternity and so this tells you like don't have maybe a, a goal that's not meaningful enough you have a goal that's grandiose maybe for you it's, it's great to make 100k a, a year right the suffering that you go through is much more worth it because it's kind of the same suffering if you want to make 100k a month, 100k a year, 
and a million a year. It's kind of the same suffering that you go on to go through. It's just that much worth it because of this big goal, because of this ambition. You're in the right competition. You're in the right play. And so you'll you'll do more things because of this. You you're more you are more likely actually to get more results having a bigger having a bigger goal, having a bigger dream, fighting for better cars than for lower cars. Like at the end of the day, you're going to suffer for like, make it worth it. Like this is what I learned also the hard way because I was not, I had didn't have like big goals. Uh, I was not that ambitious. I thought I was. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make, I was thinking of the biggest number that I could think of. I was like, I'm, I'm going to be making 10K a month. I'm going to make 50, 50K a month. Yeah. At one point I was like, you know what? 100K a month. Yeah, and that was like pushing it. Why not more? Like other people that have done a lot more are still human. Like they don't have anything different than you do. Like they're like just human beings, and they have made hundred millions, hundreds of millions, billions. They're not different than you. Like you can absolutely do. All those things. A lot of people will tell you now the odds are against you, dude. The odds, like you, you control the odds. Like you, you, it's just like people see the odds, and a lot of people just don't do the work. Like you have, you can take the odds and make it more likely for you. You can take the skills, take everything that you want, and just build and stack. And at one point, they're gonna be be true. Like you might not achieve a billion, but what if you just achieve ten million? It's more than hundred k, right? It's it's better. So. Why not just chase a bigger thing? And this is what I'm trying to do. This is why I was researching where, who were the wealthiest people in the world, and what could, could I, in the history, and what could I learn from them? It's pretty useful. And so, after you go through, you go after this big dream, you need to be. He, he's telling you about this, Paul. Paul tells you about like you got to be careful. Pay attention and enslave. Like you become the master of your body being the slave. Like you, your body needs to be a slave. And you do not listen to the temptation, to the desire of the of the body. You want to get distracted. You want to do a lot of things. You want to succumb to your lust. You want to do all of those things. But don't. Like take like control of your body. Pay attention. Because when you are at this point, when you are winning... You could like not stop paying attention, losing faith, thinking you're you're ahead of anybody else, right? Thinking you you, you got it all and you take it for granted, and then you lose it, and then you know <laughs> it hurts. You, you don't want to lose it, right? Because once you fall into temptation at this level, this is what he tells you: you're going to be disqualified of the run. You're going to be disqualified and lose everything that was given to you because you didn't make it happen really like you can you do everything that in your power but if god in a, if a higher power in the universe if you believe in the universe doesn't allow this to happen you would not have this right now like you could actually just stumble upon uh, something hit your head somewhere and die and by chance right by chance you happen to not have, you know, experienced that. And you, you're not dead. So you're lucky to not be dead. But maybe this is not luck. Maybe this is, you know, God. Something to consider. Then I... I got from the, the Bible as well that you should not... Tempt the Lord. And I think when you put a deadline on your goals, this is what you do. And this is what I used to do. I didn't know. And first of all, it didn't serve me at all to put deadlines. Like put, putting deadlines on your like uh, steps and, uh, you know, sit points like just like not the big like if you have a big dream you don't put a deadline on this right you you want 
to make a billion dollar company, you don't put a deadline on this, right? You, well, maybe you put a, a vague deadline, but you don't, like, you're not attached to it. You're not, you're not asking God, you're not praying God that you get it by this time, right? Because if you do, you're kind of tempting God. This is how I, how I got it in my mind, like how I understand it. I was like, okay, you, you should not tempt your God. Well, it was like Jesus when he was uh, fasting and the devil uh, said to him like, yeah, you can fall right, right now in God because you're the son of God. He will uh, call his angels to save you from falling, right? And he was like, no, you would not tempt your God. You, 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 you would not uh, make him prove himself, right? Who are you to say that? Like, he, he's God. He's the, the universe, right? You're not, you, you can't ask and order that. No, you pray and you, you ask gently, but you're not in any kind of power of negotiation. Like you, don't, you don't have no power over God. You, you don't have power over, over, over the universe to demand something. No, you're going to almost demand it from the amount of work and the amount of goodwill that you will put out, Right? You will, you will, like, make it unreasonable for you to not get it and not deserve it, right? But you, you can't make it, like, completely, like, hey, this is mine. Like, I should get this by, by this time. And oftentimes, I, I, I always put deadlines, and I never met the deadline on my big goals, right? Maybe some, on some projects, and I need to get this by, by this time, right? This is, I get it done. It's important to have deadlines. Like, to me, it helps me improve. But for the big goals, and I wouldn't be a billionaire by, by this date. And if I don't, if I, if I get it by this date plus one day or plus one week, it's not good enough. I want this right now. You can't, I don't think it's a good way to go about it. And this is what they teach me. Then don't whisper. Don't say things in secret that you don't want people to hear that you don't want because, because, like don't talk on people's back because it will at one point come back to you like I really believe that I, I just like I really believe that anything that I did that, that I, th I thought was wrong I, I was like I was in middle school and I won't but I was like I was just going to make a small joke but this joke was kind of like I wanted to take it as, as at the same time so what I'm talking to you about is uh, we were uh, at lunch, right? And uh, I was uh, taking, uh, there was a good dessert, right? And I had a friend of mine sitting already and uh, he was uh, he was gone. And I wanted to make a joke and at the same time, I kind of wanted to take it, his, take his dessert, right? So I took it and then I, I went on and next thing you know, I don't know how like it happened. I unbalanced my uh, my plateau, like how, how do you say that? Like, the thing that I, we hold, we held we hold for lunch like where there's there's the lunch right and there's a, a glass on this right and so make the glass fall and it falls and it breaks and shatters right and so everybody's scream whoa well, right because i'm in middle school right and people like do this kind of thing in france i don't know and um so i i felt the immediate consequence of doing something bad and when you do speak about something this thing enters in someone's ear and this person is very likely to repeat it like uh, if you i think if you make it the probable probability but if you sell say something to a lot of people uh, most people will repeat that thing or make someone someone else kind of understand that you said that at least some people don't but like if you don't want it to be known by everybody else just don't speak. Like being silent is very, very good. It just like it allows you also to, to sound smarter. Like when you don't speak a lot, it just like you you're less likely to make mistakes. But at the same time, it should not prevent you from doing like doing something. So when I'm doing a podcast, I'm speaking a lot. I'm make, making myself look like a fool, right? But at the same time, you, you need to start somewhere, right? But when you're in discussion and talking about something, some subject or in a group of people, if you are more like silent, this is what I learned also from the Bible. Uh, it's just like, you seem wiser and you don't make yourself like, look like a fool and say things that you might regret, right? Because a lot of like, when you speak, make it intentional, right? Make it like what you want to say is uh, something that is good, 
and it will not put you in a uh, difficult position or you know i've th- there's a guy that comes to the gym and uh, i was talking to one of his friend a girl girlfriend of him and i was not talking that much to her and neither to him to be honest but like he, he's just like a guy that comes to the gym younger he's in high school i think uh, his last year in, in high school i think and uh, he's a young guy that uh you know is pretty outgoing and he wanted uh so he he knows i'm i'm in business and everything and at one point i, I was just saying hello to him it was it's been a while since i have heard of him and i've seen him and so we were talking and he, he said to me that uh yeah this uh this girl tell, told me a lot of good things about you and i know that i didn't talk that much to this girl <laughs> like i knew he, he, he was like uh, kind of lying right to make himself look good to me right make him make himself like he he's uh you know he he's been like someone talked good of me right but when i i'm pretty sure like this didn't happen like i know what we talked about i know how much i talked to this girl and there's nothing good that she could have said about me like i i, I didn't like not that i did anything wrong but like we didn't speak at all almost right i just worked out once with with her because she wanted to change set and that's it so uh, we're like i have no idea what he was talking about and so i was like oh yeah like what and then he like i don't know he was like i don't know and so i knew like he was like trying to make himself like liked by me and talking too much right so maybe he should have not said that right so this is kind of an example and um so yeah uh, the end thing is that i learned from the bible it was that the lord god will not put you any temptation the universe the world will not put you any temptation put you through any temptation any uh, hardship that you haven't got the will to go through like you you have no excuses basically this is what i got from it i, I was like yeah all those distractions all those hardships that i have all those problems that i have there's nothing that i can't pass through like uh, the, i have those because i i can't I can pass through them if i couldn't pass through them god will not allow them to be in my life right everything that you're going through you can you have the ability you have the will to persevere it's going to be hard it's going to be very hard but you can you have the ability you, you have the possibility and so this makes me like you know take even more ownership and uh yeah i, th- I think i'll still read a lot of times the bible and see like learn things from like telling myself okay what can i take from this like even in this podcast you might have heard a lot of things that you don't agree with you might have heard a lot of things that you don't think is uh true but that's not the question the question is like what can you, what do you agree with what what can you take from this and learn and apply in your business how could you use this this is really the question to ask yourself with any kind of content whether you read a book whether you listen to a podcast or watch a video ask yourself this question it's very useful and this way you really learn when you take notes like i took notes on this thing this is why i can talk to you about this right now like i would not remember if i didn't like read this ask myself this and then took notes on it so i suggest you do this i hope you liked this and i want to talk about something that happened to me i would unfortunately have the time and i don't know if i have the strength to talk to but to talk about this because it's like kind of the force the uh negative force that i was talking to you about in the the part three i think or but even maybe all parts of the mindset training podcast if you haven't watched this i really suggest you do watch and listen or listen to and apply the mindset training podcast that I've had like the three the, the three parts of it go listen to them I think they will serve you a lot because they will like help you control your mind 
and get what you want out of life. Like really, anything that you would want out of life, you can actually go and get it, become the person capable of becoming it, and this will help you do exactly that. In the order, watch part one, part two, and then part three. This is not like, this is maybe in total one hour and 30 minutes. So it's very useful, condensed. I try to make it as compactful, as compact as possible so that you don't waste your time. And yeah, I don't think a lot of people tell you about this in a way that's that applicable. So please go watch it. If you like this show, please share the show. If you found it useful, share it. Like, please. <laughs> I, I don't I do not do this to make money. I do this to just to help as many people as I can while docu documenting my journey. Hope you like this. And I'll see you on the other podcast. Bye.